What's up guys, my name is Brandon and welcome back to the 38th jailbreak update video. We have some good news to talk about today. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about a new exploit released by Ian Beer that works for both iOS 10.3.1 and 10.3.2, a questionable jailbreak team, the 9.3.5 jailbreak, the Apple Watch jailbreak, and more. First of all, if you have not subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button. Also hit that bell icon right there and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any future jailbreak updates. And of course, you'll be the first to get notified when an actual jailbreak does get released. So you don't wanna miss that. Make sure subscribe if you haven't done so already. All right, so let's go and get right into the news. All right, so let's talk about Ian Beer's new exploit for iOS 10.3.1 and 10.3.2. So Ian Beer released this user space research tool, and just to make things clear, this is not a jailbreak or a jailbreak tool. It's simply files and exploits meant to be tested out and used by developers. And included in this release is Triple Fetch, which is the name of Ian Beer's exploit for CVE 2017-7047. And you can see here that the description for the CVE is that it allows an application to execute arbitrary code with system privileges. Now this was actually patched in 10.3.3. You're looking at the security notes here for iOS 10.3.3. So that means that this is only going to work on iOS 10 through 10.3.2. So notably iOS 10.3.1 and 10.3.2. So triple fetch was an exploit that was pretty tough for me to actually explain myself. I didn't really know how to explain it. I'm not a security researcher. So it's very tough for me to put my finger on exactly what to say and how to say it. So I reached out to Mr. Jonathan Levin, aka Morpheus for an explanation on this. And if you don't know who Morpheus is, he wrote a book on iOS exploitation. He's released things in the the past. I'll have his Twitter down in the description below. He's a very trusted member of the iOS jailbreaking community. Definitely check him out and he helped me out with the uh, explanation basically of this exploit. And what I'm about to say isn't going to make sense to a lot of people out there, but for the very advanced ones, the developers, you know, and the researchers out there, they're going to understand this. And I kind of just want to say it, you know, just to put it out there on record exactly what this exploit does and how it works. So basically triple fetch uses a generic user mode exploit that enables Ian Beer to overwrite the heap of a target process that he has access to over XPC. He then uses this to attack a root owned process. He then uses an old zero day to get any task port but the kernel. So basically he can access any other process but the kernel. So the bug has been explained basically in Levin's old book from 2012 and it still has not been patched by Apple and iOS but it was in Mac OS. So the bug is a generic sandbox escape which then just requires the victim process using NSXPC and securely to be exploited for a privilege escalation. So yeah that's going to sound like gibberish to most of you guys but for those of you that understood it I'm glad that I was able to explain this and then I want to thank again Morpheus for explaining this to me. And this situation is very similar to Mock Portal. It's pretty much the same situation as Mock Portal. So if you remember, Mock Portal wasn't anything until Luca Tedesco came along and made a jailbreak out of Mock Portal. So unless a security researcher or a team of security researchers come along and do something with this exploit, it doesn't really mean much for us. However, it is public. It's already out there. It's from Google's Project Zero. You know, it's pretty powerful. So it's hard to believe that it would just stay out there publicly for so long and nothing happened with it. And if you remember, Adam Donenfield from these Imperium team is actually going to be releasing his 10.3.1 kernel exploit later this month. So this could be used alongside that to create a potential jailbreak. So yes, if you are running iOS 10.3.3 or iOS 11 and you're interested in jailbreaking, I would definitely downgrade to 10.3.2 while you can and while it's still being signed because it's probably not going to be signed for too much longer now. Obviously 10.3.1 is the best place to be right now, but 10.3.2 is the second best place for you to be right now, regardless of your device as long as it's 64-bit. Now if you still happen to be on 10.2.1, one right now you are in a difficult spot and you know I really wouldn't know what to do I would personally I actually had a device on 10.2.1 and updated it to 10.3.1 last month so it's really up to you to make that decision I mean I could see a jailbreak coming for both uh, firmware is 10.2.1 and 10.3.x. So it's really up to you. You're going to kind of have to flip a coin on that one and decide for yourself. I don't want to tell you to update and then the jailbreak come for 10.2.1 and you get mad at me. So I'm just going to let you make that decision. I'll just say that I upgraded from 10.2.1 to 10.3.x. But again, completely up to you. Now let's switch gears and talk about the 9.3.5 32-bit jailbreak because this has been getting a lot of attention surprisingly as of late. Now, of course, it all started with the fried Apple team many, many months ago who said they'd be releasing a jailbreak for 32-bit devices on 9.3.5. But of course, they never did. And now Ionic, aka Stefan Esser, has jailbroken iOS 9.3.5 and claims that it was easier than he expected. And he said it was easier than expected due to Apple not correctly fixing the powerful info leak used by Pegasus. He then goes on to show which CVEs he's actually using to create the jailbreak. And it appears that the fried Apple team and Stefan Esser aren't the only ones working on a 9.3.5 jailbreak for 32-bit devices. As you can see here, Tim Starr, the creator of Future Restore, replied to one of the tweets saying, mind telling me what 
bug you're using, maybe you have something easier than what I'm trying to do. So yes, it appears that Tim Starr, the creator of Future Restore, aka Prometheus, which is how you downgrade to a unsigned version of iOS, is potentially working on a tool to jailbreak 9.3.5 32-bit. So yeah, it seems like a 9.3.5 jailbreak for 32-bit devices is inevitable. It definitely seems like it's going to come at some point in the future. And for those of you wondering why this even matters, a lot of people actually stayed on 9.3.5 on their 32-bit devices, and then others who are on the 4S, like the iPhone 4S, they're stuck on 9.3.5. That's the highest firmware compatible with the 4S. So that means that if a jailbreak comes for 9.3.5, they're going to have a permanent jailbreak. You know, they can restore in iTunes and still go back and jailbreak their device, their iPhone 4S, which is really, really awesome. Anytime there's a potential jailbreak for life, that's a big deal, and I'm going to cover it here on the channel. And of course, this makes me curious how many of you guys actually still have a device on 9.3.5, and how many of you have a 4S, which of course is stuck on 9.3.5. Now let's talk about a new jailbreak team that I mentioned a while back very briefly, the Tigris team. Now this is a newly formed team of iOS developers, mainly tweak developers who didn't really know anything about jailbreaking. They kind of just jumped in and said they were going to plan on releasing a jailbreak for iOS 11 and 10.3.x, even though they had no clue what they were doing. Well, they seemed legit to begin with because there were some members in there who had a reputation and you wouldn't really think that they'd want to ruin the reputation, but now it seems they may be full of it. So a couple days ago, a member of the Tigris team tweeted out and soon deleted a tweet that said, asking for money is worse than making a fake jailbreak, which is referring to Ionic, who's essentially raising money on Kickstarter to release a 9.3.5 jailbreak. So this team member basically just straight up implied that they are making a fake jailbreak. And there's obviously more to it as well. They tweeted out something about a device that was a 64-bit device getting boot looped on their 32-bit jailbreak, which they were working on for 9.3.5. It's a whole long story, but it's very, very fishy. So there's a lot more to be said here, but I really don't want to waste my time on any of this. The moral of the story is don't believe anybody until they actually release something. Don't believe anybody or any team until they actually publicly release something. And lastly, let's talk about DEF CON and the Apple Watch jailbreak that was demoed there. So DEF CON took place on July 27th in Las Vegas, and Max Bazele was there to show off an interesting Apple Watch Watch OS jailbreak. Now, of course, this jailbreak doesn't include Cydia or Substrate, but it does give you SSH access. And really, this whole thing is just cool to say that the Apple Watch is jailbroken. Now, of course, this probably isn't going to be released to the public, but it's really cool to just see that it's been done. And, you know, I've talked about previously what you could do with a jailbroken uh, Apple Watch, so I'm not going to get into that, but it's just really cool to see that it was done. And we could possibly expect a public Apple Watch jailbreak in the future. But anyways, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Again, get to 10.3.2 if you can right now while it's still being signed. If you're interested at all, and jailbreaking. Of course, 10.3.1 is still the best place to be right now, but 10.3.2 is the second best place to be right now. If you have any other questions, of course, leave a comment down in the comment section down below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it whatsoever, and I'll see you guys in the very next jailbreak update video, which should be pretty soon.